time for Lego to give us our next iteration of Mindstorms. I don't know what that was. I think there's something in the box still. Lego's last foray into the robotic system with the EVG3. EVG3. That's not right, it's the EV3. I don't know why I said G. Put that in the, uh, in the, in the front there. What is... It's been about four years since LEGO's last foray into the robotic scene with the LEGO Mindstorms EV3. And since then, we've all been eagerly anticipating the next innovation from LEGO in robotics, and it seems like LEGO Boost might just be that. Set number 17101, the Creative Toolbox, features 847 pieces as well as five models for you to build outside of the box and code to your heart's desire. But the biggest change this year is the tablet integration that the set comes with, which LEGO hopes will open up robotics to a much younger demographic. But is LEGO Boost actually successful in this, or is it really just kind of a gimmick? Well, let's take it out of the box and find out. Before we get into the set itself, let's talk about cost for a second, because this isn't exactly a cheap experience to get into. One box is $160 USD, which only gets you enough pieces to build one model at a time. And that price is already a little steep, but that's not factoring in the hidden cost of requiring a tablet. And yes, you heard that right, the tablet is absolutely required here. In past Mindstorms editions, you could usually just download an app on your computer and code from there, but here, the experience is all going to be in the iPad, which is great if you already have one, but if you don't, like me, then and that's going to add an extra $300 to the experience just to build the set. The app is pretty good and it's commendable that LEGO is trying to bridge the gap between physical toys and digital ones, but at the same time, if you're not fortunate enough to have that iPad on hand already, this is not a cheap experience for you. And that's something that you really might want to consider when purchasing the set. So after you have your box opened up, your foldable unfolded, and your pieces splayed out everywhere, you are now ready to download the LEGO Boost app. Now, at the time of this review, the app is only available on iOS, which means if you have an Android tablet, you are out of luck. Now, I don't know if LEGO is planning on releasing an Android version of the app, or if that's already in the pipeline for the August release date, but at the moment, the experience is for iOS users only, which kind of sucks because iPads are very expensive. And speaking of iPads, the app is also only available for tablets. I tried to download this app on my phone, and unfortunately, it did not work. You need an iPad running iOS 10 to download this app. Ugh, the cost. The cost are just rising. Ugh. In the instance that you do have extremely deep pockets, you have that iPad, you have the Lego Boost, then you can download that app, and once you have the app installed, you are greeted to a very bright, vivid, and pretty fun environment, which is great because you're going to be spending a lot of time in this app. I actually find the design of the app to be quite nice. I really do like that they've broken down all five models into their own subcategories, and you're going to see further on as we move deeper into this app just how intuitive it actually is. So, on the right corner here, you've got some settings, which you can adjust the volume, the music, language, and it gives you some nice little credits there as well. There's also some advanced settings here which give you even more access to the app. Um, you can unlock all the tutorials right off the bat, which I don't actually recommend because as you'll see further on, the tutorials are locked for a reason. 
But my favorite thing is that you can reset your progress and all your unlocks. Over on the top left here, you've got some nice little videos of essentially just kind of advertisements for each model and what they can do. It's uh, some neat stuff. It kind of just gives you an idea of what you're going to be building as you move further on into this app. But otherwise, not that interesting. When you've selected your model, the one that you want to build, you'll be greeted to a category screen with like maybe five different boxes. You're going to notice that most of these are locked and for good reason. LEGO has designed this app in a way that's going to kind of guide your building experience as well as your learning experience. So each category is going to be broken down into a segment. In these segments, you will build a certain amount of the model and then you're going to learn some coding to go with it. And once you've completed the building, you've completed the coding, you can then move on to the next segment where you'll build a little bit more and then you'll also learn some more coding as well. It's actually a very nice guided learning experience that's really, really clear and really intuitive in building and learning how to actually use LEGO Boost. I'm a very big fan of this app here. So when you've completed the model up to a point, the instructions will close out and you'll move on to the coding hub. And here, this little grid area is where you're going to be spending most of your time in this app. I find that this coding grid is actually pretty similar in style to what we've had before with Mindstorms, but they've really limited the uh, amount of words. In fact, you're not going to see very many words at all. Instead, everything is sort of organized by color. Now, the lack of words is both a good thing and a bad thing. In many instances, I find that it's good because it kind of forces you to have a hands-on learning experience. You're going to be forced to experiment and find out exactly what everything does. But with that said, because there are no words telling you what anything does, oftentimes I felt myself getting a little lost at times. I wasn't exactly sure what some of these symbols were meant to represent, and sometimes the animations that the robots end up performing are very similar to different ones before, so it's kind of difficult to tell what the difference between certain certain bits are. But once you've played around enough with the coding, the app will then grade you on whether or not you're ready to move on. One block will usually keep the next subcategory locked up, so you need to play around enough until you can get four blocks from your experience. Those four blocks will then open up the next subcategory and you can move on to the next building portion. Then once you've built up your model a little bit more, the instructions will close down again and you'll move on to the coding hub to learn even more. And it's kind of like that as a rinse and repeat up until the point where you finally finish your model. When you complete an entire category, the app will then reward you by adding those coding blocks to your toolbox, which will give you access to a custom coding board. I don't know if there's actually a real name for this thing, so that's just what I'm calling it. But here you can click on that plus button. It'll create sort of a new project. You click on that project there and you now have access to all the coding blocks that you just used in that tutorial. As you progress through the app and you complete each category as well as their sub-segments, your collection of coding blocks will increase and by the time you complete the model you'll have access to all of them. Now, Simply building the five models that are included with the set is going to be time consuming enough and obviously I recommend building all five because you're going to be learning a lot of new tips and tricks as far as coding these things. But when it comes to actually making your own creations, once you're done with the five models you can then move on to this sort of hidden vortex area that I like to call the mocking center. I don't actually know once again if there's an official term for that because there's no words in this app but I'm calling it the mocking center. Here you're given two sub models here giving you ideas ideas, kind of teaching you how to sort of use the sensor bricks the sets come with to create your own creation here. So if you want to work from a base model, you can just click on that plus button and it's going to add another project to your collection. You can then click on that project and begin coding it as well as adding your own pieces to the model itself. Now, to be honest with you, there are a lot of options here, and I haven't had the time to go through every single facet of this app. So when it comes to the ceiling of what can be done and what can be achieved with LEGO Boost, I don't actually know. But I do know that the app gives you enough information and enough freedom to really begin building your own creations with it. So we're going to be doing another video where we try to mock with LEGO Boost just to see what we can come up with. But until then, let's move on to the actual models that you can build from the app itself.
All five robots are going to be utilizing three different components. There's the Move Hub, which is where most of the magic happens, and is what's going to link to your tablet via Bluetooth. There's also a motion detecting sensor, which can also detect color, as well as a motor. And those three components are going to make the base of your robot. Now the major difference between LEGO Boost and LEGO Mindstorms before it is the introduction of traditional system bricks for this set. Now I didn't have too big of a problem with the LEGO Technic from before, however I do find that the system bricks just make the models a bit more visually appealing. There's more structural soundness to the design and overall just looks a bit more cohesive. And I also really like the brighter colors like those introduced here. It just makes the environment a lot more fun to work with. Vernie in particular I think does the system building style a lot of justice. Compared to some of LEGO Mindstorm's past flagship robots, I just find that Vernie is one of the prettiest. I also think he utilizes those three components the best. It really does feel like the app was sort of centered around Vernie and his interactions. In fact, I find that the other four models are a bit lacking in that department. Some of their coding blocks and abilities are just a little bit limited compared to Vernie, and some of them are even borrowed from Vernie. For instance, the Mer 4, which is a perfectly fine standalone model and does of course have its own unique features, borrows one of the shooting components from Verney. It was something that was just instantly familiar and is a trend that I found through the other four models. There was just something that felt a little copy pasted about them. Which is both a good thing and a bad thing because that means you only need to build Verney to really get a good sense of what LEGO Boost is all about. However, once you start moving on to those other models it will start to feel a bit derivative. As mentioned previously, the Mer 4 is a very awesome model. I really like the way it looks structurally, and I think some of its more uh, random and unexpected features are some of my favorites out of all five models. The Auto Builder was really promising and very cool, and I think the thing that I like most about it is what it could bring to the table. As it stands, the Auto Builder itself is pretty lacking in features. Once you've built it, all it can really do is just sort of auto build one of those little robots that come with the set. Other than that, it doesn't really do too much else. However, I do find the potential for being able to make something like a big LEGO 3D printer that can build mocks for you is pretty awesome, and I think that might be achievable with LEGO Boost, so who knows what the future will hold. But as it stands, the Auto Builder is neat, promising, but ultimately kind of forgettable. Frankie the Cat looks nice, but I wasn't really sure what to do with him. He was the one that I had the most trouble figuring out. Sometimes the animations for each coding block was just so similar to another one that I couldn't tell what the difference between these two were meant to be. And I found that ultimately what Frankie could do was just not much. He could kind of move his head around and purr and I guess move his tail, but he was kind of boring. He was definitely my least favorite model of all five. Guitar 4000 I think is my personal favorite, only because I think just the idea of being able to play music with a Lego guitar is just one of the coolest things I've ever heard. With that said, my experience while using the Guitar 4000 were a little shoddy at best. Sometimes the app would glitch out and close down on me, or sometimes features just didn't work like they were supposed to. The build of the app that I'm working with is a developmental build, so I don't know if any of these glitches will be sort of ironed out by the time the set is fully launched, however my experience with it was a little lackluster and very inconsistent. With that said, once I was able to sort of figure out Guitar 4000 and the coding did work the way it was supposed to, I had a lot of fun. And I can't wait to see what a lot more experienced coders and guitar players would be able to do with this model. I think there's a lot of potential here and playing around with it and messing around with it was a lot of fun. I think this is the model that I spent the most time with out of all five. So would I recommend LEGO Boost? Well, yeah, I think so. The price is pretty steep and it does require an iPad, but if you can get around that, I think there's plenty of fun to be had here. Now there is a learning curve and I do feel like it took me a while before I truly grasped what was going on, but if you're coming from Mindstorms, I don't think you're gonna have much of a problem. And I do think LEGO did a pretty good job of simplifying things so that younger kids can get into robotics. I did want to take a moment to thank LEGO for giving us an opportunity to take a look at these sets in advance because let me tell you, there is no way this review would have come out at a reasonable time otherwise. But thank you so much for watching this video guys, if you liked it be sure to click the like button and subscribe and also head over to our Patreon 
Patreon at patreon.com forward slash the TTV channel where you can donate to us directly and help support our channel and help us make more videos just like this one. So thanks so much for watching everybody. I am VAR and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.